and welcome back to the Chicago Bears franchise rebuild. Here today we will be going through year six of the Bears. We're gonna go do a full sim of the offseason, um, draft, and then regular season and potentially into the postseason. As we entered in today's episode, um, the Bears came off of a 9-8 and eight record. I believe we were one and done in the playoffs. Um, if I can find that screen for you guys very quickly. Um, but I believe we were one and done in the postseason, um, which, of course, not something that we really want to see. Um, this is now... Actually, no, we weren't. We beat the Panthers again, and then we beat the... And then we lost to the Niners in uh, the divisional round. So, you know, things are kind of the same here. And at the end of last episode, I talked about, you know, this is a prove... It, this up-and-coming season is a prove-it year for Cliff Nicholson. And I believe so it is. I mean, two seasons where he went 9-8, and eight, he's won a playoff game, he's won... Um, then he he's 1-1 one one or 2-2 two two in the postseason... You know, he's right now the 30th ranked quarterback as an 80 overall. So, you know, we have to, we, you know, we have five years left, you know, in this series. So we have to make them all count. And if that means at the end of this episode and the beginning of the next episode, we're thinking about our next quarterback. So Cliff Nicholson is very much on the hot seat. Um, you know, I want to figure out this running game a little bit more, I think. Uh, Jonathan Howard had a okay season. Um, he only he was mostly just kind of a touchdown machine um, in more games played than last year. Where um, if you think about it, you know that's kind of what we're hoping for. He played all 17 games and he didn't have more rushing yards or anything like that. Just more touchdowns. So we got to think about running back. Who's going to be the backups behind him? What are we going to do with Kendall Bush? You know, is this his last game? or last season as a bear. Um, you know, I, I do like Bush a lot. We'll see. And then, of course, um, Jerry Gay. You know, he's coming off of his fantastic uh, year three. He's entering into year four. You know, he's a superstar now. Uh, an average right now, technically tight end, but I think he's on the up and up. And then defensively, we have to make a decision here on Tyler Chamberlain. I mean, Chamberlain here is asking for a seven-year over north of $200 million dollars. Now, he's a coverage linebacker, not a pass rusher, but right now the second-ranked out, left outside linebacker, I guess it, that warrants that type of money. So, there's not too many holes on this roster, in my opinion. You could argue maybe improvement at defensive tackle. You know, you could say linebacker, what we do with Tyler Chamberlain. Uh, I think we're still three deep at corner. I think we're good enough on... I think we're good on the edge. You know, you could argue try to move off of C.J. Garner-Johnson, start Trent Sheffield. That could be a move. And then offensively, you know, tackle is definitely a decision that we have to make. Is it wide receiver? Do we go with Doug Anthony, who we traded a haul up to go get? Um, you know, what do we do here now also with Christian Murray here? Entering into his last year, he'll be 25, entering into his 26-year um, year. Um, age year um but does he deserve to become a starter somewhere who knows so let's get right into the off season we're gonna do things fairly quickly here um especially this draft i'm just gonna go through picks by picks with you guys our selection and then we'll kind of go from there just for my own little knowledge here the falcons won the super bowl desmond ritter mvp as you guys can see last year they lost the super bowl the chiefs have won it as well as the um cowboys and I believe the Ravens as well, yes. So, you know, we're going to be trying to crown a new champion, and hopefully that's us. You know, that's the ultimate goal here. Let's quickly check out retirements. Um, overall, I think that we have a good amount. Jack Contlin retired. Actually, he's the only one. So never mind that. Let's get into the offseason. Let's have some fun. Well, welcome to Resign Phase, where we have $86 million and a lot of decisions to be made. Tyler Chamberlain wants a seven-year $209 million. That's a pretty price to pay. That, I mean, I, I like Tyler Chamberlain a whole lot, but I, I, with this contract, I just don't know. Oh, I guess we I did offer him a contract. Yes, I did, but he wants more money. I offered him a $209 million. But right now, let's sit back and wait for Chamberlain. 
Uh, Derby, I'm picking up his fifth year option. He's just an important player for our offensive line, as well as Chuck Gardner. Does Chuck Gar Gardner doesn't want to be here, so yeah, I want to give him another another year with us. Kendall Bush, let's return to him. Brad, I we drafted his replacement. We're gonna let him test. Braskin Jones, I, I think we can find a better tackle. So Jones is out. Same with Evan Neal here. Maybe I revisit him. Jordan Battle, no. Unfortunately, I'm not going to re-sign BJ Cash. You know, he was one of my favorite players. We'll see if he goes anywhere. Um, a couple veterans here. Not thinking about re-signing them. Eddie Jackson, out of just respect to him, I will offer him a one-year 3.3. He declines. Maybe we'll get him later on. And let's see. Who else do we want? So, uh, Bree or Beach here and Cam Richardson want long-term deals. You know, I've been thinking about what we do with the franchise tag. And do we try to keep Beach for another few seasons? I don't think I'm going to find a better kicker than him out in the market. I'll offer him this three-year deal. He denies it. And then for Cam here, um, yeah, let's offer him this two-year deal, and he also rejects us. So maybe we come back and revisit them. The franchise tag for Beach is $5 million, and that is something that I'm thinking about. Um, but I think the major question is, do we want to franchise tag Braston Jones, keep the offensive line, keep our starting uh, left tackle? He's also our second best offensive lineman. Or do we keep the tag to potentially tag Tyler Chamberlain? Gonna take one more stab here at Tyler. Um, this would make him out, no doubtably, the highest paid outside linebacker, maybe in franchise history. And I'm gonna bump it up to 211. You know, I like him a lot, and Chamberlain denies here. So that leaves us with a $25 million franchise tag that would keep our two linebackers together as well as it's one less decision we have to make. I don't know. I thought about it. I think we're going to franchise tag Beach here. I want him on a $5 million base salary. You know, he's looking for seven. So for both Braston Jones as well as Tyler Chamberlain, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not giving them the tag. Jones, this is his ceiling. He's not going to get better, and I'm not going to want to extend him. And $29 million very much eats up a ton of our cap room. And for a tackle that struggled a year ago, I do think finding a younger tackle could help us. The reason I'm not tagging Tyler Chamberlain, I know 25 is not a bad number whatsoever, but I, I think it's, it's an outside linebacker, an off-ball linebacker. I don't know how important that is in the sim, and I think we have a couple younger younger linebackers that can play now we have to make a decision here on kendall bush i like bush a lot and as you guys know he was the first selection in this series i like to try to build more around him but for right now i am not going to be negotiating with kendall bush let's get to open free agency well, welcome to Open Free Agency, and again, another episode. I think this bug is just going to be relevant, or just going to always happen until the end. I have no one I am targeting right now, and it says we have five negotiations. We don't have any. Madden's being Madden. So, I will have to sim to the next week just to be able to negotiate with players, but there's a ton of talent out here, and... Hopefully we can kind of dip our hand in some of these players. So I have to sim to the next week. We have $80 million. Let's see what we can do. As there is a lot of talent here in open free agency, I'm going to make three bids. Troy Smith, N'Kobe Dean, and Mike Linfowski here. I think all three of these guys would be solid players added to the roster. So we'll evaluate them. Um, Tony uh, Smith has yet to decide, but we got Dean and Mike here. So... Starting right tackle is a nice band-aid for his season, and Dean can also be a band-aid or quality depth for the next two seasons for us. In terms of um, the around the league, um, Tyler Chamberlain has signed with the Tennessee Titans. Tunsil's moved to the Rams. Um, Troutman here, who was on the Lions, he's moving to the Patriots. So we see Braxton Jones also going to the Texans. Same with Kendall Bush. So. 
Same with Sanu. So they kind of added some, a couple good offensive players for their young quarterback. Um, Jake Henson signs a four-year deal with the Saints. Um, not too many other moves here that I'm really kind of keen on. There might be a couple, but we'll see what Smith decides. He would be a quality bat number two running back. Well, let's get into the draft. Taking a quick look at the roster right before we get into the draft. Um, as you guys can see, we kept Christian Murray. We got brought in uh, Troy Smith here. Um, so he's going to be our number two back for the next few seasons. I think our offensive skill position is kind of set. We could look to add a fourth receiver if we choose to. Um, offensively, or the offensive line, I think finding another tackle in this class would really be beneficial. Pat McLean can handle himself at left. Um, for this year, this will be the, probably the starting five. Defensively, um, I think we're, we have our talent. It's just continuing to make them grow together. I think linebacker could be a spot. You know, we brought in Dean to kind of be that other linebacker, but we have Harris, we have Landry. They can both play linebackers, so... Maybe this is the starting unit. One player to look out if we decide to trade up is CJ. Um, we drafted Sheffield, who is a 78, and we would have two very good young safeties back there on cheap deals. So could be something in play for the during this draft night. And welcome to the 2008, um, no, 2028 NFL Draft as the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. But we'll just sim the first pick and then we'll sim to our selection. Dalton Hall here, pass rusher at a temple goes to the Cardinals. I made the decision to stay pat at the 27th overall selection as we will draft Caleb Blagley here, left tackle. Um, he'll probably be playing right tackle for us. He has an endev, 78 strength, that does worry me a little bit, but hopefully at right tackle he will be able to handle himself. And here in the second round, we'll draft Darren Harris here with A zone coverage pretty happy with that 90 speed hidden development at 23 years old he could become the future replacement for um what's his name tyler chamberlain here in the third round i want to get a playmaker joey felix here out of usc um 93 speed normal dev but what an excellent athlete here at six foot six very happy with this selection First of uh, four um, selections, we have two fourth round picks. We'll get Reggie Silver here out of Cincinnati. 94 speed, another excellent athlete out of the backfield. And just because I don't think we're going to be keeping um, Christian Murray at the end of this season, their other fourth round pick, Aaron Durbin, is the selection with 96 throw power, normal dev, not much of an athlete. The Purdue quarterback, who's six foot six, will be probably our future backup. Here in the fifth round, just because uh, Jacoby Moss here has two to three talents, I'm going to select him here in the fifth round. 88 speed, not the fastest, maybe a practice squad player. Just to get some depth across the offensive line, Carl Rush here in the sixth round, nine or 82 strength and normal depth. And just because I don't know what Beach is, you know, long term um, kicker for the team, so Ben McBride here with our seventh round selection. 91 kick power and hidden development. Dude, we just draft our new kicker here in year six. And here is the draft class, ladies and gentlemen. Caleb Pierre, our first round selection, is a 72 overall. He's more of a pass protector. The low strength does concern me just a little bit, but, you know, he could potentially play guard. You know, I don't really know how the, how that, the strength rating works. Here in the second round, we got Darnan Harris here. 90, he's an excellent athlete. He can hit with 86 hit power. 69 zone coverage, nice. He could be the linebacker of a future, the future. Um, Joey Felix here, six foot six playmaker. Um, gotta work on his route running, but he can do a little bit of everything with 99 juke. You know, could be an interesting kind of hybrid type of receiver for us. And then Reggie Silvers. And the, what, the fourth round? We got a good backup running back here and maybe a developmental back. 74 overall, also normal dev. Uh, got a quarterback in this draft class, Aaron here, who is capable to be a backup quarterback. That throw power and those accuracies are pretty decent, if you think about it. Moss here, who was more just 
You look like the best player on the board. Another playmaker archetype. We'll see what he can do. Maybe makes the practice squad. Could make the roster. Um, Carl here, 56, or yeah, 57 overall. Uh, no redeeming qualities. Might not even make the roster. And then McBride here, um, 68 overall hidden development. Could work into that starting kicker role. I just don't know right now if we really want to do that to this roster. And this is the opening day roster for year six. Cliff Nicholson will take QB1. Um, we, we kept three quarterbacks on this roster, four running backs. We're going to get to see now how Doug Anthony takes over the league potentially. We traded up highly to go get this playmaking receiver. And Anthony needs to prove it. And he needs to prove it quickly. Kendall Bush, we let walk in this past offseason. Starting five offensive line, you could argue that we kind of downgraded this offensive line. So how will Nicholson kind of prevail with that? And then defensively, we definitely got worse without Tyler Chamberlain. But with right now four young uh, linebackers should be able to be useful. We didn't make too many changes to this defense, really none at all. So um, besides the Chamberlain move, we'll see how this defense will play. Um, this is going to be the specialists. Um, as you guys can see, uh, DJ Moore is in the slot. Uh, Troy Smith will be getting some snaps. And for right now, we're going to go with Harris as that other linebacker. So linebacker will be drafted in the second round. So year six will start off versus the Green Bay Packers. And probably right around week four or five, we'll check back in. As we've made it to the bye week with the eighth three and two record we're just coming off of a loss versus jacksonville so kind of a hot start for us you know a good start right now tied for first place and you know we have a top tier offense right now defensive where we're kind of lacking here and that's the strength of this team but so far so good let's go quickly look at what we're going to do here in um our resigns we have 116 million dollars and Jonathan Howard, he needs a new deal. Jerry Gay needs a new deal. Same with Dalton Kelly. So three important players already. Max Cox is due. Same with Grover Dexter. CJ wants a new contract. Corey, we have a lot of starters or role players on this team that need new deals. Our specialists as well. And then we have to decide on Danny Reeves and Cliff Nicholson's fifth year option. So... A lot of decisions to be made here um you know we're at the weeks we're at the bye week we're just gonna kind of keep moving on i don't think we're gonna make any sort of trade so let's get back to you guys for right around week 12. as we've made it to week 12 here as we're coming off of a lo another loss here as i'm showing you guys we just lost to the seahawks 31 to 25 we have a five and five record and right now throughout this season it looks like our whole team is kind of struggling to kind of figure things out we kind of need to do something different it looks like um let's do a quick little stat update and see if we need to make any sort of adjustments quarterback cliff nicholson solid season 19 touchdowns three picks 2,000 passing yards in 10 games i want to see a little bit more but you know almost a three to one touchdown interception ratio is very good jonathan howard better yards per attempt I don't know if he's going to hit a thousand this year, but he's playing solid football. Five scores. Jerry Gay, 600 receiving yards and four scores. DJ Moore having a bounce back season in the slot. Doug Anthony here having a okay year. And then Tyler Scott, solid season as well. Got to really make a decision now on Jerry Gay. Pat McLean is struggling at left tackle. And then right now on the other side, Christian Harris or Christian Ryans, excuse me. Um, who's taken over at right guard. He's playing excellent. Steven Timmons here, who's taken over as the top-tier linebacker, leads us in tackle. Josh Allen has six sacks. Not too many sacks on this defense, which is surprising. And then Steven um, has two interceptions. TFLs, Josh Allen leads the way. So, looks like there needs to be an adjustment on defense. Let's see if, what we can, what I can do. Let's look at our contracts here. I think there's one player that I definitely want to get done and that is uh jerry here um he's right now our best young offensive maker offensive weapon really so i want to give him a five-year deal this is not a contract that i want to wait around to, to figure out so five years 70 million dollars 
and uh, it doesn't resign, but he's interested in it. So Jerry was definitely one player I wanted to attempt, as well as here Max Cox. Cox is an important player in our secondary, and he's just someone I don't think we can replace. And he's looking for a better fit. Max does not want to resign. Um, and then in terms of anyone else currently right now, those would be the two big contracts. We will circle back if Cox hasn't signed, Dalton Kelly must become a re-signed player. As we've made it to week 18, we have an 8-8 eight eight record. We've won the division. We'll definitely be the probably the fourth seed. Um, it could be a rematch again versus the Carolina Panthers, but with an 8-8 eight eight record, um, this is our last chance to kind of do some re-signings. Um, as I click the wrong thing again. Um, but I, I, I do want to work with Jerry, see if we can bring him back. And same thing with uh, Max Cox here. Two just very important players as Jerry's contract just demands went up. So I am going to make him a fairly high paid tight end here. Five years, $80 million. And he resigns. You know, we do need a big time tight end. Jerry has been producing. Um, I'm happy we got that contract done. For Max Cox here, he wants a little bit more money. So I will bump it up here. And maybe I add an extra year. So four years, $66 million. This is exactly what he's looking for. So Max Cox does resign. That leaves us with $87 million. And, you know, someone like Grover Dexter, he's an interesting player, but two years, $27 million. He's had a he had an excellent rookie year, and since then he's had maybe one other good season, and that was when I was usering him. So, in terms of the sim, he's been a good, you know, run stopper a little bit, but I, I just don't think that it's necessary right now. Dalton Kelly is probably the most interesting one, and then if we don't bring back Jonathan Howard, what do we do with running backs? So, you know, I do think maybe two-year 13 million dollars here for Cortez might not be a bad idea here we're kind of cycling through defensive tackles he's looking for a little bit more money um, but I think that would be probably the only other contract that I would consider as of right now um, I mean I think we have our future kicker and Michael here wants a one-year deal that's something we can figure out in free agency so Let's go see who will be playing in the postseason as we have won the division. We are going to make it three straight years here with Cliff Nicholson. And again, we will be playing against the Carolina Panthers. Last year, we played them in the wild card round. And before we get into the playoff game, let's do these three upgrades. Steven Timmons here. We'll continue going field general with him. It's kind of funny. Three years ago, he was kind of like the third linebacker. Now he's the the number one on this defense and you know he's a talent he's very good across the board Carl Cannon a year ago we traded for him um, I'm gonna work with power this time um, I think Cannon's a good young offensive lineman just got to continue working on some of his weaknesses and then our other guard Christian Ryan's here who we drafted a season ago um, He's been developing quite nicely. We'll go Agile upgrade for him. Um, just trying to get a good boost here. Got some strength up in that business, so that's good. So let's go Sim. Let's go see if we will make it to the divisional round. And we were one and done as we lost to the Carolina Panthers 31 to 24. One and done in the postseason. Not what you want to see. Cliff Nicholson. Um, two touchdowns one interception I mean now he has a below 500 record in the postseason that's not good could not run the football whatsoever Doug Anthony had a good game um, same with Jerry Gay who got paid um, Pat McLean struggled four sacks allowed defensively we got no pressure at all and Trent got an interception but this wasn't good enough here. Let's go through some stats here, and then we'll get into the uh, um, next offseason, basically. So Cliff Nicholson, 31 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Definitely a better season from a year ago. His best year, 30, 31 touchdowns, tied 
Well, he didn't. He had a best. He had his best QBR, his worst passing yards, tied for his second best touchdowns, best interception to touchdown ratio, sacked, tied for the least, best completion percentage, and lowest yard per game. So, some areas he's regressing, some areas he's not. He was offensive player of the week a couple times. I don't know what we're going to do with now Cliff Nicholson. Jonathan Howard, who had a good start to the year, ends the season kind of disappointedly. Um, you know, we, I don't know what we're going to do with Jonathan Howard. It's kind of after the year of me using him, he's kind of become a disappointment. So I don't know just yet. DJ Moore got back to 1,000 yards. Happy to see that. Jerry Gay, 75 grabs, 900 yards, and 8 scores. Happy about that. And Anthony and um, Tyler had similar seasons, 700 yards passing or receiving and a low scoring rate, but could catch the football. Jonathan Howard also caught 55 passes out of the backfield, so that's pretty good. Um, Kayla, or excuse me, everyone has allowed a sack. J Christian uh, Ryan's here only allowed one, but Pat McLean allowed 14. What does that mean for his long-term future? That's really the question, you know? Um, entering into year five, I don't really, or four, excuse me, I don't know. Defensively, Steven Timmons led us in tackles. Danny Reese was behind him. And then TFLs, Josh Allen led the way with 24. Chuck Garner with 14. And sacks-wise, Josh Allen and Garner produce no one else really became anything for this defense and then interception steven timmons was our turnover machine what has happened to jalen johnson so yeah that's not good in terms of um rewards joe burrow is your nbp coach of the year mike um mccarthy and then in the nfc let's see if we have any bears not quarterback defensive none of the rookies not quarterback not running back receiver see ben tate from a year ago drafted no one is here so no awards i assume less pro bowlers this was also a losing record as we went eight and nine i did not really point that out to you guys but back to the drawing board here let's get to the uh the pro bowl looking at the pro bowl here who's made it in and the nfc justin fields did um Cam Richardson, whoever he went to, he made it back into the Pro Bowl. Don't see anyone in terms of our players. Jerry Gay, tight end one. So that's good. We got our star tight end. No one on the offensive line besides Johnny Derby. So he continues to produce for us. Defensively, Josh Allen got in. And then is there anyone else that potentially could have gotten in? I don't think so. And no. So what, three, four pro bowlers? Not the season that we're kind of looking for, you know, an eight and nine record. And, you know, now we're gonna sim to the next week. We'll see um, between the Chiefs and the Falcons. The Falcons have made it to three straight Super Bowls. Will they win, though, back-to-back? -back? This year's Super Bowl champions are the Kansas City Chiefs, going, uh, winning 29-14. The Falcons go 1-2 in the last three years in the Super Bowl, as Isaiah Pacheco is your MVP. So as we're wrapping up today's video here in year six, we'll go through year seven next time. Like I said, there's five more episodes. We have this episode coming out seven... Uh, year 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, but what do we want to do with this roster? I mean, overall-wise, I think when we enter into this up-and-coming offseason, we have to make a decision here at quarterback. You know, do we want to continue moving forward with Cliff Nicholson or no? In terms of running back, if we decide to move off of Jonathan Howard, are we comfortable going with Troy Smith and Silver? Do we need to add... A veteran back into this backfield in terms of the receivers i mean doug anthony had an average year and he's already in year three now you know he kind of has to produce or excuse me i had a cough right there or what do we do with doug anthony here um dj moore he's not going to get any younger here already 32 years old 18th best best receiver in the league and 
he's becoming more day-to-day -day by a slot receiver for us. Though I am very happy we re-signed Jerry Gay to his five-year contract extension. He's had two monster seasons, and now he's going to be paid like a top-tier tight end for us. Um, so, I mean, you know, you let Howard walk. You know, DJ's getting older. Do you think about receiver? Do you think about running back? Do you think about tackle again? Um, in terms of the interior, I think we have at least our guys. So tackle is definitely a position of need. And then defensively, I mean, we might lose both Dexter and Watkins here. So we kind of have to consider drafting the defensive tackle. Um, CJ will most likely go. And that leaves then um, Sheffield and Reeves. Um, we have our young linebacker. Maybe Harris becomes our the bat or the Robin to Timmons. I don't know just yet. You know, do we consider drafting another defensive tackle? And of course, Dalton Kelly, his contract's up. You know, do you re-sign a superstar corner? I mean, you would like to, but 74 overall. He hasn't. He's had two years without interceptions. He's been a solid player. Um, I don't know. And, you know, not a lot of these guys want to come back. And we kind of have to figure it out. We have four more episodes to go. Like I said, if we make it to a Super Bowl, that's where we pause and I play it. So we have four more attempts, guys. Um, let me know down below what you think we should do, what changes we should make. I am getting excited for Madden 25. And this series should hopefully be wrapped up by either launch date or after or a little bit afterwards. So please le leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, let me know down below if you think I should adjust anything. I hope here in year, as we enter into year seven, we have a little bit of better fortunes. But we'll see, it looks like we have money in this up and coming off season. So guys, I hope you're excited for year seven as much as I am, and I will see you in the next one.